And now we're going to talk about is being a good cover player, also known as a mid player. Okay, as a mid player, you are the link between your front players, your other mid players, and your back players. Okay, one of the biggest things about uh, being a cover player is not so much what kind of gun you use or how fast you are. It's your is how well you observe the field and how conscious you are of your surroundings at all time. Okay, mid players. Probably some of the most uh, some of the most difficult positions to truly master when you're out there playing woods ball. Okay, the reason why is one, your front players are generally hunkered down because everybody's shooting at them. You need to be able to find the shots to to get your uh, front players out of trouble. Now, I will tell you that one of the the best skills that you can have as a mid player is when you hear a shot to know within four or five feet exactly where that shot came from. Now it takes a little bit of practice and, and they're, they're, we used to do this drill back many many years ago to help people kind of develop the, uh, um, that, that, that sensory of being able to pick out exactly where the shot came from. Now what we used to do, and it looks insane, but it works, okay? We'd have a team and what we would do is we'd take all five of the players and we put a handkerchief over their face, so like this. So what we would do is they put on a mask. Then what we would do is we would take a handkerchief and put it over them, okay, just like this, so they can't see what's going on in front of them. Then what we would do, so we'd have five players all lined up like that. Then we would put three people out into the woods, and one of those three players would just take a shot, and it, it forces the people that are basically blindfolded to, to try to figure out exactly where that player is at. So you're sitting there and you're, you're, you're blindfolded and you're standing out there and you're listening, you're listening all of a sudden, you hear the shot and then you try to figure out within a couple feet exactly where that person is at. It is an amazing drill for woods ball because it's amazing how many mid players will hear a shot and not know within a hundred feet where the shot came from. So if you're on a woods ball team or a scenario team, and especially if one of your jobs is always going out there and sniffing out the snipers, one of the best things you can do is that drill. You go out into the woods, get a handkerchief like this, go ahead and put your mask on, and then take the handkerchief and just tuck it into the back of the strap so you can't see what's going on, hold your gun up at the shoulder, and then when you hear a shot, take you know try to figure out within a couple feet where that person's at. After about an hour of doing that, you're going to get pretty good. I personally, when I'm out there in the woods, if you take a shot at me, especially one of the guys that are in the ghillie suits, I will know within three feet exactly where you're located. I'll know how far out you are, how far to the left, how far to the right, you know, whether you're laying down or standing up. I've gotten that good from, from over the years of playing in the woods, knowing exactly where, when you take that shot, knowing exactly where you're hiding at. Um, something else that you too, as a mid player. Most of the people that are playing are right-handed, okay? Very few people in paintball play left-handed. There is a portion of people that can play both. There is a portion of people that can play left-handed. Most of the people play right-handed. Um, so when you're out there looking throughout the woods, you know, you're, uh, you're, if they're right-handed, they're going to be off to the left of the prop. So if you're scanning trees, you want to look towards your left-hand side of the props so that you can figure out possibly where the person is at. Now, as a mid player, one of the best tools that are out there as a mid player is a tip and flatline, without a doubt. One of the best mid, mid player guns out there. The reason why is you need that extra range because you're, you're uh, shooting past your front players and you need that extra range to get it out there to shoot at not only their front players, but their mid players. Um, some of the other things too as mid players, I'm gonna draw them up here, but there's a couple plays that you can do as a mid player, um, that, as a cover player, when your front players get into trouble, let's go ahead and we're going to talk about as a mid player strategy is a common kind of a, um, um, a mid player ambush. Okay, let's say for instance, you have a, let's say for instance, this is the tape right here. You have a front player right here and you've got a mid player here and a mid player here. Mid, mid, front. Okay, your front player's in a ton of trouble. He's taking, shoot, taking shots from everywhere. What a good strategy to do is, is these two guys cross up, kind of like that, and your front player drops back and runs backward. Now these guys are staying perfectly still, crossed up. Any of the opponents that were originally out here shooting at your front player are going to give chase. So they're going to go down, 
They're going to chase after the front player and going to go right into the ambush of the two mid players. Okay, so that's a real good ambush to do. Another thing you can do as a mid player, um, as mid players, is you can set up. Let's say, for instance, at the beginning of the game, let's ignore this and come on over here. And let's say at the beginning of the game, you're both your mid players sprint. You got a mid player here and a mid player here, and they cross up. Now they're standing there and they're staying perfectly quiet, perfectly still. Your front player, who's back here, kind of runs up, runs around over here, and then drops back again. Their whole team is going to focus on these two mid players, or I'm sorry, focus on the front player, and completely forget about the mid players here. So they're going to be pushing to come attack this guy who's out in the open, running around, running back and forth, and this, that, and the other. Once they cross about the 30 yard line, the mid player is going to blast them. Here's another thing called a flank. Okay, this is another really common, really easy strategy to do. Okay, you've got a mid player here, and a mid player here, and let's say you've got a front player right here. And you look, and you've got an opponent here, an opponent here, and an opponent here, and they're all shooting at your front player. What you can do is tell your front player to dig in, so he stays perfectly still right there, and then what happens is, is your mid players can now flank around the sides like this, and come up on the sides. These guys are all focused on the front player here. Okay, and will usually lose focus on the two mid players that are gonna swoop around. Now the front player needs to stay as dug in as possible, and as these guys are swooping around, they make sure that your front player doesn't get bunkered. But you can come around the sides of them pretty easily and take all of them out as they're focused on your front player. Mid player play is what I like to call the alley play. This play works amazing. Okay, we do this at Camp Landing all the time. What we'll do here is down here at the bottom, let's say for instance this is an alley, and you'll have a, a mid player down here and a front player down here. And let's say for instance down here at the end, you've got people that are just posted on this alley. This can also work at trails. What you do is, is your front player almost works as bait. When he bolts across the alley, all of these people are going to be shooting at him running across the alley, which allows the mid player to sneak out and shoot these players out that are shooting at the front player. So as the front player goes streaking by, the mid player pops out, he's perfectly stationed, perfectly ready to shoot, da, 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 and gets them. Here's something called aggressive, uh, aggressive retreat. Um, let's say, for instance, your front player is up here and he's in deep trouble, and you've got your mid players that are right here that are covering him, okay? He's taking fire from, let's say, four different people shooting at him at once, okay? And he's in deep, deep trouble. What you can do is your mid players can come up just a little bit to lay fire at these guys here, just enough to give him enough breathing room to dump back, to dump back, and these guys will also push back. So that's called an aggressive retreat. So instead of him standing up and trying to run backwards like a maniac with everybody already shooting at him, you push up just enough to to um, to give him enough cover fire for him to drop back and then all three of you drop back at the same time. Now, one of the really big issues that I see with mid players and working, uh, working together with front players is out in the middle of the field, everybody yelling three, two, one, okay, go. That's the worst thing you can do, okay? If you're a mid player and, and you guys, let's say for instance, the objective is to tag the base, okay? And, and your front player, you can tell, is motioning you that he's getting ready to go and tag the base. The worst thing you can ever possibly do is scream out, okay, everybody, he's going to run up and try to tag the base. Okay, on the count of three, let's all give him cover fire. Three, two, one, and then you all start shooting as he starts running up there. The worst thing you can ever do. Okay, that front player is going to get sawed in half before he makes it to the base. What you got to do, he's the front player, he's basically the quarterback, when he moves is when you guys do the cover fire. Don't ever do the 3 2 one, let's shoot cover fire. I, I've caught people trying to run up on me and do that, I've sawed them in half. I've made them pay dearly for doing that. Don't ever do that. So what you do is, is when your front player motions, okay, I'm getting ready to go tag the base, you make sure you check your paint, make sure everybody in the line checks their paint, all the mid players check their paint, make sure they're ready to go, and as soon as the front player starts to move is when you give your cover player. It's on him, not on you. So the move happens when your front player goes, not when the mid players tell him to go. So don't ever do the three, two, one, go. You're going to get that front player sawed in half. So I'm going to try to put up some more strategies. Next up is the, uh, the back player, the defensive player, sniper player.